What does freedom mean to you? Does it mean to be free as you please? Or does it mean to do as God pleases? Amen. Look at what freedom meant to the prodigal son. If you got your Bible or electronic devices, turn to the 15th chapter of Luke. The prodigal son wanted to be free. He wanted to do what he wanted to do, go where he wanted to go, and he didn't want anybody telling him what to do. And in the 15th chapter of Luke, and, and I'm not, you could spend probably 10 sermons on this message here, but we're going to just do the highlight. Starting verse 11, and he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that falleth to me, and he divideth unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, and he took his journey to a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. The prodigal son wanted freedom. He wanted to do what he wanted to do, and he's no different from any one of us. We all want freedom, don't we? Does that sound like our nation today? Look what's happening in the United yeah. States. Yeah. I graduated in 1967. They took a busload of seniors to Washington. Everybody got off the bus. They said it would be good if two or three walked together, and everybody went. It's not safe to go today if you took the state police with you. I mean, look, look at Washington, D.C. It, it's sad. What does freedom mean to you? Does it mean free to do as you please? Or does it mean free to do as God pleases? Does it mean free to live by your standards? Or does it mean free to live by God's standards? Does it mean free to fulfill your pleasures? Or does it mean to fulfill God's pleasure? The prodigal son thought, getting away from his father's house, he'd have real freedom. Let me give you a personal example. When I was a teenager, my dad told me I had to be in at a certain time. Well, I went and asked him why, and here was his answer. He said, if everybody goes to hell, do you want to go to hell? That had nothing to do with me being in. But you know what that meant? If you knew my father, a bomb went off, he never got excited. But you know what that meant? The conversation was over. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it wasn't no use. That was it. <laughs> in Judges, the 21st chapter, the 25th verse says this. In those days, there was no king in Israel. And the last couple words in that verse applies to the United States today. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Our forefathers declared their dependence upon God. Now, we need to watch out that we do not forget God. During the 60s, there was a significant culture change in America. All the rules began to be challenged. People thought if there were any rules, there was no freedom. They wanted real freedom. No law, no morals, no community standards, just freedom. This freedom led to free love, free drugs, free sex, free everything. If it feels good, do it. The freedom the prodigal son thought he had led to misery and not happiness. He thought freedom was the power to live his life by his rules, but let's look at the results. In verse 13 of Luke, and not many days after, now we don't know how long, but I think when he got his money, he wanted to get out as quick as he could. My son graduated from college, and he said, I'm getting away from this town. I don't like it. He said, it's nothing here, and I'm going to the city. He wasn't down there long. He called me one day. He said, I don't live far from work. It takes 45 minutes there. People, it's everywhere. I didn't say nothing. He said, I got to come back home. <laughs> it wasn't what he thought. But this, this young son, he gathered all. He took a journey. And if you notice, he didn't go next door. Where did he go? Far country. He wanted to get away as far as he could. And he wasted his substance with riotous living. He was just like the rich fool in Luke. He said, I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. But what did the next verse say? Souls required him in it. And by the way, everybody's got friends when they got money. You ever know yourself? You're all laughing, but if you ain't got any money, how many true? And a man told me one time, and I just questioned it. He said, if you've got 
three real friends in your life, you've got more than most people ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. But in verse 14, and when he spent, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in war. And he went and joined himself into a city of that citizen of that country, and he sent him to the fields to feed swine. A Jewish man feeding swine and broke it. That, that's about the bottom end. <laughs> but not only for the prodigal son, but for each one of us and to the United States of America, Galatians, the sixth chapter and the seventh verse says this, Be not deceived, God is not wrong. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We, have, we are reaping what we sown. In 1960, non-marital births were very rare. Today, two-fifths of all births are to unmarried women. I couldn't find any data. This is old. But in 1971, the United States spent over a trillion dollars fighting the drug. People hopped up on drugs. That's in 71. Yeah. What is it now? In 1963, the Bible was taken out of public school. Yeah. In 1963, the reading was taken out of public schools. In 1973, abortion was legalized. And in 2015, same-sex marriage was legalized. The United States has abandoned real freedom, and now we are experiencing a fake imitation. The consequences of abandoning what real freedom we had in Jesus Christ and biblical principles is being played out not only in our community, not only in Washington, it's in the whole country. What many have perceived as freedom has led them into bondage. For the prodigal son, it was freedom to be on his own. In the Gettysburg Address in November the 19th, 1863, Abraham Lincoln spoke these words. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Just like the prodigal son, many Americans today are convinced freedom means to do what you want and when you want to do it. Free to do everything. No rules. Today, it is very fashionable to leave God out of everything. It's fashionable to be promiscuous. It's fashionable to be a homosexual. It's fashionable to kill unborn babies. We have rights. It's our body. That's not right. While freedom from God may sound appealing on the surface, the results are devastating. In Proverbs, the 16th chapter, and the 25th verse, it says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The prodigal son came under conviction and made a decision. In the 17th verse he says and when he came to himself you know a lot of times maybe you're not like me have you all ever said I'm going to do it and then after you came you go to the Lord to help you instead of going first <laughs> no, I mean you're laughing but true. you know true. You, 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 you know you said I'm going to do it and then you say Lord I, I need your help and it would be so much easier to go first. But we don't do that. We, we don't do it. <clears throat> but he said to himself, How many hard servants of my fathers have bread enough to eat and spare? And I, I perish with hungry. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Take me as one of thy hard servants. Somewhere between 1776 and in 2024, America redefined and reinterpreted freedom under God to mean freedom from God. That's it. Think about that. Freedom 
under God to mean freedom from God. Our real freedom comes in Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Just like each one of us, we can do like the prodigal son. He made a decision, but oftentimes we make that decision with the end of our road. You know, they say people get a lot more religious in hard times. My father-in-law fought in the war. He said, I don't care how rough you were, what religion you were, if you had no religion. <clears throat> he said, when you're in a foxhole, I never met anybody that didn't believe in God. And that can be true in hard times. <clears throat> but he said, I will rise and go to my father. I will say I have sinned against him. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. And he asked, treat me as one of thy servants. Fortunately, before it was too late, the prodigal son came to his senses. And I'm going to say this, and I believe it, and it's as much my fault as it is each one of us. The reason we're in the shape we are today is because Christians let them do it. We let one woman take the Bible out of school. Why? One woman. Every one of us should get on our knees and pray that our country will be as fortunate as the prodigal son. I don't care if you're from Donald Trump, the Republicans, the Democrats. That's not the answer to our problems. How are we going to turn? How is our country going to get back to where it should be? It's so simple to get its heart. The answer is found in the Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, the fourteenth verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, he says, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Amen. Amen. It's not to the Republicans, the Democrats. It's not no political leader. Patrick Henry said this, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religions, but by Christians. Not on religion, but the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Part of Patrick Henry's last will and testament says this, I have not given everything I own to my children. There is one more thing I wish I could give them, and that is Christ. Because if they have everything I gave them and don't have Christ, they have nothing. Amen. <clears throat> we can be just like the prodigal son. I hope everyone here is saved. We can do just like the prodigal son. When we come to ourselves, <clears throat> we can go to Jesus Christ and say, I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. I don't care if you're a preacher. I don't care if you're a Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, brethren. I don't care what it is. That's not going to get you to heaven. That's right. If you don't have Christ, you've got nothing. Mm -hmm. And just like the prodigal son, father, Jesus Christ will have compassion on us, and he will save us if we ask him. It's so simple. Yes. I had an uncle, and I may have mentioned this before he was dying. He knew he was dying, but I couldn't. I just, he just couldn't get it. I left him a track, and at his funeral, a man got up, and he said, he got right before he died. That meant nothing to me. Did he, did he get baptized? What did he do? And I said, what did he do? Either the day he died, or the day before he died, he said, I went in and told him, he said, you're dying, and you're going to hell. He accepted Christ as his Savior. And here's what he said. I didn't know it was that easy. See, his whole life he tried to work. You can't, you can't do it. <clears throat> and when somebody accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior, in the, in the 15th chapter of Luke, the seventh verse, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner, sinner that repenteth. I ask you this morning, what is freedom? How do we have real freedom? And how do we keep it? Our forefathers declared their dependence upon God, and we need to do the same. We need to watch out that we do not forget God. Our real freedom comes in Christ. 
Amen. You have to accept Christ as your Savior. And don't say tomorrow, because 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, the 2nd verse, where he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and the day of salvation I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Just like the prodigal son's father, Jesus Christ will accept anyone and everyone. And the answer is found in Romans chapter 10, the 9th and 10th verse. Mm -hmm. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thy heart that God is risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.